And with that, I am going to introduce my good friend, Julie Lockhart. And Julie is going to talk to you about what do we do next? So thank you. Ken's mini me, so I'm gonna try to move this down a little bit. Um, tell you a few stories. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. One of the biggest things we're doing this symposium for this morning is to ask you each to make a difference. And we've all heard that a lot before. But um, in this case, we're thinking specifically about a word called stewardship. And here's a little um, definition, a person whose responsibility it is to take care of something. And the key word for me here is responsibility. In this case, it means taking care of the land and the water around you um, that you interact with every day. And as you have seen from Ken's presentation, and we all pretty much know this already, but you don't need to live directly next to a water body to affect the water quality in your watershed or the watershed that's downstream of where you live. So um, yes, we affect. Um, the water and it's important to take care of it and yada yada. We have so many things in our lives, challenges, tasks, problems to solve. Um, time is precious. You have to pick and choose where you put your energy and your focus, your time, your treasure. Um, I believe that Owasco Lake, the source of our drinking water and the center of the economy for our region, um, deserves more attention and commitment from every person who lives here. Um, it's not somebody else's responsibility, it's all of ours. And one way I like to think of this is, um, think of steamrollers. So this is my favorite scene from um, Austin Powers' first movie. <laughs> it's ridiculous and I love it. Um, in this case, we have uh, labeled the uh, security guard as us and um, the steamroller being driven by Austin Powers, <laughs> that's a scary thought, is our water quality. It's, um, we see something big coming. If nothing changes, we are gonna get squashed. Now, human beings, are not very good about steamroller crises. We don't handle them very well. We like um, crises that we can see that are coming right at us and they're coming fast, like a baseball flying at your face, you duck, or a woolly mammoth charging down at you, one of your ancestors, and you run or climb a tree or get out of the way as fast as possible. Um, we can handle crises that are immediate. If there's a big storm, we help each other dig out, fix things, bring food, whatever we need to do. If we have a loved one who gets sick, um, we rally around the community, all helps. We know what to do. But when it's a slow, impersonal, happening out there crisis, our brains just aren't meant for that kind of attention and energy and focus to be held for that long. And that's why this is a challenge for us. Um, we also like to put a face on danger. So when something happens, we want to know, okay, who done it, you know? Somebody's at fault here, somebody's responsible. We automatically do that. And in some cases, there just isn't a face. It's impersonal, but that doesn't mean it's not real. Um, now, we talked about 
watersheds. And when I ask kids in classes, when they think of the word shed, what do they think of? One thing is, well, a kid says that there's a storage shed for our tools in the backyard. Yes, a shed stores things. A watershed stores water. What's another thing you think of when you think of the word shed? Oh, um, my dog sheds. All that hair just kind of comes off. And I'm, well, that's the same thing with a watershed. The water sheds off the high places and goes to the low places. Well, I have a third way of thinking of watershed, and that's the term watershed moment. OK, a watershed moment can be a tiny thing. Um, the story I like to tell is if you're thinking of a watershed at the top of a hill, um, one side the water goes this way, and one side the water goes that way. Um, Seth was talking about a hill, and you know, he no, I was actually it was a young guy, Jason, who was saying that there's a hill in, on his property where the water does exactly that. One way it goes to Cuga Lake, the other way it goes to Owasco Lake. Um, so you think of right up at the very top edge of the watershed, and it rains, and the rain falls, and it starts to collect into bigger and bigger drops, and then it starts to form a rivulet, and it starts to head downhill. Um, mm -hmm eventually heading to what the catch basin at the bottom of the watershed. But there's a twig in the way of this particular little rivulet. And, and so suddenly the, sh the twig shifts. It changes position, and that pushes the water a different way. And it goes down the other side of the hill. Um, I couldn't get a good sh uh, twig picture, but I did found, find this one, which is a, a, a cup, a watershed of water, or our own selves filling up with something, and one more drop is going to send it over the side. Um, I like to think that we are like this cup because we are full of um, plans and responsibilities and care for something. Um, and we know it's important, we should get to it, but we're busy, and then something changes, some small thing. and it sends our intention into, into, um, into better focus, more attention, and energy. And we start doing, not just thinking about it, but doing it. And we have these all the time. Sometimes they stick with you in your mind for the rest of your life. And sometimes they're so small, you might not notice them, but they are there. So what I'm hoping to get from you today is a watershed moment, if you haven't already had it. And, and, specifically toward your water. Um, the first thing is that shift of attention can make you more watershed aware. So when you're doing things every day, you start to think, how is this affecting the watershed? Um, and we would invite you to become a watershed steward, a person who takes responsibility for the water in your world. Um, there's some practical, uh, practical things you can do to become a watershed steward. The first one is you can take the Lake Friendly Living Pledge that a lot of Finger Lakes have joined in. Um, you can just Google Lake Friendly Living and the pledge program is right there. Um, it gives you some practical examples that Ken kind of already went over and we know these things like uh, turn off the faucet when you're brushing your teeth and um, don't rake leaves into storm drains or off the edge of your property into the lake or a stream. Um, people do this a lot, and it's not a, not a good thing. Um, you can go online and find those. Um, you also can visit our website um, at aula.org, and um, we'll tell you about us, that we're a, a citizen-based 501c3 not-for-profit corporation founded in 1988. We are just regular people um, who volunteer. And each of us at some point had a watershed moment to get us to take action. Um, you can look on the, on the website and see some of the projects that we're involved with. And as you do, keep in mind that we're not the experts. We're trying to help the experts, and you're going to be hearing from some of those today. Um, people who are educators, people who are scientists, people who run the water treatment plant, people who, who are farmers, um, all sorts of businesses that need water. We want to be there to support those people as best we can. This is a, a chart that's hard to read, I know, <laughs> um, but it shows the, um, the lake and the watershed at the center and then all the different organizations 
local, county, town, city, state, federal, um, educational institutions, uh, different agencies, and Little Aula um, working together to take better care of the water, and we want to be able to help in any way we can. We are not, big capital not, the regulatory authority, not the watershed police. Um, watershed regulation and enforcement of businesses and landowners to the appropriate government organizations um, is left to groups like um, another acronym, Wasco Lake Watershed Management Council. Adam Effler is the executive director. Um, they're the ones who keep track of, of regulations. Another important thing about AULA is that we listen. Uh, we like to hear from people, um, get suggestions, get ideas, um, help send you to someone who could give you a more complete answer. Um, and we would love for you to be involved with us in improving, preserving, and protecting Owasco Lake. You can do that by joining us, um, make a donation, become a member, which is an annual membership. Um, and even better, you could volunteer with us. We have big jobs, small jobs, desk jobs, outside jobs, you name it, we can find a place for you and your interests and your skills. So that's all I had to say today. Sorry for the little glitch. And um, onward to our next presentation. <laughs>